everybody. It's another good day for good church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you get up and stretch your legs and get ready to give God your best praise this morning. It's a beautiful day outside. Hallelujah. It's 60 degrees, so we don't have to wear my mask now. Come on, give God some praise this morning. If you haven't gotten an opportunity, turn to your neighbor if you haven't said so already and give them your smile and tell them good morning. Good morning, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song says, I can go to God in prayer. No matter what the situation is, I can take it right to the feet of Jesus and he will work it out on my behalf. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad about it. Yes. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands
already. And I know for sure, I know that I know that I know this is my testimony that you can work it out. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Ooh, I thank you, Jesus. The word says, be not weary in well-doing. Because in due season, in due season, I can see the breaking of day. God is making a way. A change is coming for me. If I just trust and believe. There's no reason to doubt. I know he's working it out. Because he's turning around for me. Here's the good part, though. <laughs> it won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect.
you're going through. It won't so deep that nobody could see him and he cried out and he cried out but no one was in the area so no one could hear his cries and he thought he was destined to die but suddenly he heard footsteps and he said hey I'm down here and to his surprise his friend looked over and he said Joe I'm down here come get me and he looked up and Joe jumped in the well and he said what are you doing I'm trying to get out why would you come now we're both in the well and he said yeah but that's because I've been here before and I know the way out Whatever you're working through, however bad it looks, and if it looks like nobody can hear your cries, God hears you, and he knows the way out. So you sometimes just have to remind yourself in your sunken place that it won't always be like this. It just feels like it. So if, you, if it resonates with you, I don't want the praise team just to, I need you to speak into your own self. Physician, heal thyself. Speak life into your situation. Hallelujah. So we can all come together just as one saying, It won't always be like this. It won't always be like this. It won't always. news, ain't it? It won't always be like this. Isn't it good to know that we can go to God in prayer, whatever our circumstances are, whatever it looks like, whatever it feels like, we have a God who can turn it around. So we give God and we give God thanks and praise this morning for who he is and what he means to us. So let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. That the people of God bless his name. For our God is great and he's good. And he has said that he is for us. And so we bless his name today and we give him praise. Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Reverend Elder Kenneth Jones and it's my great delight to stand before you this morning and to bring you the scripture of the morning and to render a prayer. We welcome also those who are worshiping with us online. We pray, oh God, that the spirit will be in that place as well as here in the sanctuary. The scripture that I'll be reading this morning is taken from Romans 8, 24 through 39. And it reads, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together.
for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, then he also glorified. That means you. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect. It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that he is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I believe a hallelujah goes right there. Praise the Lord. Gracious, merciful, and almighty God, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, extending your mercy to countless thousands, forgiving iniquities, transgressions, and sin. As we gather in this place of worship, as we bow down before the God that we adore, as we lift up our voices in thanksgiving, our hearts long for the, for the nearness of the God who made us. Our feeble bodies seek the, ver the very touch of his hand. In your great love, you've entrusted your spirit to us, to lead us and to guide us in the way that we should go. Help us, O oh God, to walk according to your word and be empowered by your spirit. Help us, O oh Lord, to have a heart for the lost. Help us never to forget that one day somebody told us about Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that you give us the strength and the desire and indeed the passion to tell somebody else about Jesus. Tell them 
that he died on the cross to save us from our sins. And whatever our circumstances are, this God is able to turn it around. And so it's good, oh God, that we come to you in this way to ask first that you forgive us of our sins and to give you thanks for all of the wonderful things, wonderful things that you have done and continue to do in our lives. We pray for this church called New Bethel. We're grateful, oh God, for the spirit that abides within. We pray, oh God, that you will strengthen its leadership. We pray, oh God, that what we do here in this place will indeed have eternal consequences. We pray, oh God, for this community that you've planted us. We pray, oh God, that you will water us by your Holy Spirit, that we do those things that you've called for us to do. And so in our hearts, we bless your name. We can't stop giving you praise for your goodness and for your great love. And now, God, as we end this, this prayer, we pray, oh God, that all that we do, whatever, wherever we go, whoever we see, we pray, oh God, that the Spirit of God goes with us. That when they see us, they see you. When they see us, in the way that we walk, in the way that we speak, in the way that we work, in the way we care for others, that they too will be inspired to hear more about this Jesus and about his saving grace. And so bless us now, God, as we go. We pray, oh God, that even this, in this house right now, at the end of this service, that somebody will come to know Jesus Christ for themselves. That they will come forward and receive Christ as their personal Savior. This is our solemn hope and prayer. In the wonderful and the matchless name of Jesus Christ and for his namesake that we ask all these things that the people of God say, Amen. Minister Tavera Stith, and I am going to give you our announcements. But before I do that, I just want to take a pause. Elder Ken Jones is about the smoothest brother out here ever, right? Man, not only is he learned in the word, but he just keeps on moving, keeps on pressing. And he is such a great example of how good God is, right? We read those scriptures that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And then we forget to celebrate it when we see the embodiment of it in our very people. And I just celebrate our elders today, right? I celebrate our elders today. And that is a perfect introduction to our first time guest. If this is your first time at New Bethel, we welcome you. And we wanna share with you some extra love. So we hope that you can text the word guest to 202-798-8927. And no matter your age, no matter your ilk, no matter where you come from, whether you're online or you're here in the sanctuary, we are delighted that you've decided to worship with us. Can we give our guests just another round of applause and love. You all, we are a multi-generational church, amen? 
a multi-generational church. And so while we're celebrating our elders, do you all know what next Sunday is? Do y'all know? Do you know what the next Sunday is? It's the experience. Can everybody say the experience? Now, the experience is when our young people take the stage and they share what God has done for them. Now, some of y'all feel like on fifth Sunday, I don't know if I need to be here because I ain't young. Well, you young at heart. You're still moving. So I hope we are packed next Sunday for the experience. And you all, our young people keep it real. So the theme next week is prepare for war. They're reading the news. They're seeing what's going out there in the world. And they're ready to be soldiers in the army of the Lord and to do that battle. So if you want to join them, next week they're going to have on their black and their camouflage. So I want you all to get out your black and your camouflage. Come a little casual because we're going to turn up for Jesus with the experience. Y'all ready for that? Amen. Amen. All right. Now, one of the things that we know is as a Baptist church, there are some, some key things that are a part of our belief system. And one of those are immersion by baptism. And we are so lucky that we are finally going to be able to have baptism together on May 7th. Are you all excited? I am so excited that on Sunday, May 7th, we are going to have baptism. So if you feel like this is, you've just sort of entered in, you've accepted Christ as your Savior, but that piece of baptism you still need to do, we want you all to look on the website so you can register, we can know, so someone can reach out to you, tell you everything you need to do. But let's say you've been walking with the Lord, but you feel like it's in a new season. And you need something that is a symbol. Baptism is a symbol. You want to go down and come up because you want to show that you are different in the Lord. We welcome you to baptism as well. And all you need to do is register as well. I hope to see you all out for baptism because that's amazing. Now, how many of you all are Bible enthusiasts? You're excited about the word of God. All right, look at all those hands. Now put your hands down. Let me ask some truth here. How many of you all are Bible scholars? Yeah, not as many hands passed. It looked a little empty up in here. Well, for those of you who are Bible enthusiasts, but you like to go to the, to the edge of Bible scholar, we've got the academy. All right, and our academy is our way of digging deep into the word and preparing leaders, preparing you for ministry through like intense Bible study. And we are gonna be doing that and our next survey is the Old Testament. So if you don't know the difference between Jeremiah, Isaiah, Hosea, and you don't know who Nehemiah is, you are gonna figure it out in this survey from May 2nd to June 20th, because we need to know the word. We can't just uh, like tell people, oh, the word of God, but then you, you don't know quite what, right. So we want to make sure we know more than three scriptures um, and that we're tasked and ready to go. And we're going to start with the Old Testament. Amen. Amen. We are so excited to have you here in our worship service today. We want you to experience it in any way that you would like. But we also know that giving is a big part of who we are as a church. And at New Bethel, there are five ways to give. You can give directly through mail by mailing your giving to our church at 1739 9th Street, uh, Washington, D.C., 20001. You can give on our website. You can use our mobile apps. You can also text the word GIVE to 202-759-6222. And you can also give through GiveLify. Don't let the rocks cry out for you. I want you all to praise God today, not only with your mouth, your arms, your heart, your spirit, but also through your gifts. Because when we do give, God presses it down, shakes it up, and, and pours out a greater blessing for us. Amen. How many of you all want a greater blessing? Amen. Amen. I thank you so much. And there are a load of announcements on our website. So if you've missed anything I've said, then you will go onto that website and make sure you're clued in. Thank you so much. And you all have a blessed day in the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Sanctuary looked good today. It looked good today. God been good to some folk up in the room. Hallelujah. 
Well, I want to welcome you to worship. My name is Dexter Nuttall. I'm pastor here at New Bethel Church. I want to welcome you into the sanctuary and to those who are worshiping in our online sanctuary, our virtual MB Anywhere uh, community. Uh, we are glad that you are here. We are a church where we are seeking to reclaim, recapture, reactivate the power of the first century church in the 21st century. And so I believe that we should be expecting miracles. We should be expecting to see God move in great ways in our lives because God is still the same God of yesterday. He's the God of today, and he's God forevermore. And so I'm excited for your presence and grateful that you are here, um, grateful for the G-Zone ministry gathering right now downstairs. There are our young people we have on second and fourth Sundays, G-Zone, and um, that's because we haven't quite figured out how to get enough people to do it on every Sunday. So look at the next person next to you and say, is he talking to you? <laughs> Yesterday we had a vaccination uh, gathering with uh, Black Nurses Collaborative, BNC. Because health equity is a thing, and our folks need to have access to resources and information. Uh, and I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they were the, the first question they asked. They said, "They said two things. They said, I don't have a church, and we want a church parking lot." So y'all know me. You know what I said, right? Well, well, uh, well. Look at here. Second thing they asked was, "Do you have a, a children's ministry?" Because. Parents and caregivers want to be able to come to worship and actually worship. And so it's critical for that sake, as well as for the sake of our young people who need to have God presented to them in a context that's relevant and that they understand. So if you're interested in serving in the G-Zone ministry, we would love, love, love to have you, Minister Reagan Rogers and the team downstairs, uh, as well as all the ministries, ask you to just stay posted on everything by way of the church website. I'm not going to go through all the announcements. You have heard them. Uh, we need you to become engaged, and we need you to be involved, and we need you to, when you say that New Bethel is your church, mean something more than you just come in on a Sunday. Because here's something that a lot of people don't know. The real blessing of church happens Monday through Saturday. When we serve together, when we pray together, when we learn together, uh, and we grow together. Because growing together is what it is that we are doing and what we're about here at New Bethel. Amen? Amen. We also want to encourage you uh, to give. We thank you for your giving and for your generosity, for your consistency. It is what allows us to do the ministry that we do and allows us to be who it is that we are, having the impact that we have. It's because of your gifts. Uh, and so we have a giving litany. Uh, you can secure an envelope on the back of the pew in front of you if you would like to give in hard copy, if you want to write a check or put cash encourage you to make sure that you write your name on the envelope so that we can give uh, acknowledgement and accounting to you for how you have sown into this ministry. You can also use any of the giving platforms uh, that you have uh, heard and that you see on the screen um, and uh, know that you are sowing in good soil prayerfully that soil is is feeding you and providing a harvest in your life. Now, if 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 you haven't given to your own church, you might not want to give to this church. Like if you got a church that you go to, sow into the soil of the place where you are eating. Thank you, David, for that amen. I can't get no help up in here. Take your gifts in your hand. Take your phone in your hand if you're giving electronically online. If you are in your living room, just take your phone. You can hold it up. We're going to bless what it is that God has given for us to sow today. Father, we thank you and we love you. We bless you, God, for overlooking our faults, overlooking our mistakes, overlooking the times, God, that we've left things undone and you still meet our needs. We thank you that you are not broke. We thank you that you have not run out of resources, and we thank you that you still have all power. And so, God, we ask, oh God, that as we sow today, you would stir up the gifts that are within us, the gifts, God, of time, the gifts of our talents and our gifts, and the gifts of the resources that you have given us to steward. 
Consecrate them, O God, even as you soften and consecrate and fill our hearts with faith, that as we sow, by the power of your spirit, you will water and fertilize and allow for a kingdom harvest to be produced in our lives and in the life of your church. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what we see happening and what you are doing. We thank you even more, God, for what it is that you have in store. For eyes have not seen, we believe. Ears have not heard. Hasn't even entered into our imaginations the things that you have in store for us as we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. All the givers said amen and gave God an offering of worship right there. If you have an envelope that you uh, want to uh, give today, you just lift your hand up and the ushers are mobilizing to make their way to you. Um, a couple weeks ago, actually several weeks ago at this point, um, the, the NCAA basketball tournament took place. And uh, shout out to HU. Because we was dancing and we was in the dance. And, 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 and our men's ministry celebrated by, by having a little contest. And so there's a winner, and I'm going to call the men up because they're going to make a little presentation to the winner because we want to celebrate the brothers in the house. Can we celebrate the brothers? Can we celebrate the brothers in the house? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, my name is Deegan Malcolm Poole, and um, <laughs> um, and I'm the co-leader of our Watchmen's Ministry. And today we have a special, uh, special, a special uh, presentation. Uh, for those of you who haven't met, my name is Aaron Morgan. I also co-lead our men's ministry here. Um, we appreciate Pastor for giving this moment to be able to celebrate our, our winner. So just to give a couple of context, uh, some of you may know we had our, our March Madness tournament in March. And this year, the Watchmen Ministry sponsored our churchwide NCAA March Madness bracket challenge for men's basketball. Um, all New Bethel members were invited to participate. This year, we were fortunate to have 25 participants, which I was very impressed since we only gave you all three days notice. <laughs> give <it> <laughs> But only, of course, uh, one, one person could be crowned champion. Now, for context, there was a lot of history that happened in this year's tournament, both in the men's and women's side. But we're going to talk about the men's side today. Um, this year, Fairleigh Dickinson, FDU, was, uh, beat, it, uh, beat the number one seed, Purdue, and marked the first ever time in men's tournament history that a 16 seed beat a number one seed. The Yukon Huskies, which was this year's national champion, won their fifth national championship, and it ties Indiana and Duke for the fourth most national titles amongst NCAA Division I men's basketball. And in this year's tournament, only three of the 25 participants in this year uh, correctly picked UConn to win. And to make sure to emphasize how close the winner was to losing, they only bested the runner up by one game. So that means this person picked the national championship correctly but they beat this person by only one more pick. It's a difference of 20 points, which if anybody plays fantasy, you know how close that is. So we wanted to take the time to be able to recognize this person. When I call this person's name, we would ask that they would come up to the stage to be recognized. So, Tim, if I can get a drum roll, please. The winner of this year's 2023 New Bethel March Madness Tournament is Kyle Wilson. So, uh, Kyle, uh, we wanted to make sure that we captured this moment because it's the first time that we've done this. So, we had a beautiful trophy that was made. 
And to emphasize this, Malcolm went all the way to Maldor to get this trophy. So, on behalf of the men's ministry and the Watchmen, we want to congratulate you for winning this year's tournament. He will also, on behalf of me and Malcolm, since this is our first year doing it, he will also win a $50 gift card to Amazon as well. Appreciate you guys letting us have this moment. Now it's back to worship. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Has God has been good to you? Come on, has God been good to you? What's your response? Has God been good to you? Why don't you just open up your mouth and just speak well of our God? Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and speak well of him. We all stand in need of something. Hallelujah. It is in your pouring when your answers are answered. Hallelujah. It is in your pouring when those things and those voids that you need are filled. Come on. Come on. Let's fill this atmosphere with your praise and your worship on today. Is he worth it? Hallelujah. God, you're worthy. Hallelujah. God, we adore you. We magnify you. Come on, Zion. We lift you up. Hallelujah. Come on. You're going to catch on in a second. We magnify you, God. We give you glory. There's none like you. Hallelujah. 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 The message has already gone forth that uh, we can go to him in prayer. Hallelujah. It is through prayer where, where things are changed. So we want to encourage you that he can, that whatever it is that you're dealing with on today, that he is going to pull you through it or that he is pulling you through it. Hallelujah. Through. I have come through, Lord, it was you. Through all I have gone through, Lord, it was you. Hallelujah. It was you. It was you pulling me through. Come on, do you believe that on today? Oh, it was you, Lord, it was you pulling me through. Hey, through all I have gone through. Lord, it was you. And God, we're so grateful today. Say through everything that we've been through. you've gone through. Say, it was nobody but you, Lord. It was you pulling me through. One more time. Hey, you should have caught on now. Through all, through all I have gone through. We know, Lord, it was you. How you keep making ways out of nowhere. was against the wall. Lord, it was you. Hey, and we say, it was you. It was you. You pulled me through. Hey, one more time, say, Lord, it was you. Lord, it was you.
love, hallelujah. You never walk down on us, hallelujah. No, never, no, never.
pause for just a moment and offer prayer and praise and worship and thanksgiving to God. Just, just in your space, whatever that means or whatever that looks like, just offer praise and thanksgiving to God because the fact that he's not walked out on you, despite what it is that you're feeling and what it is that you're thinking and what it is that you're going through, that's the promise that he will be with you this week. That's the promise that he is going to be with you this week. That, that is the promise that God is with you right now. That's, that's the promise. The promise is the fact that you haven't taken your life. The promise is in the fact that you haven't thrown in the towel. The promise is in the fact that you haven't quit. So whatever you want to do, God, 
however you want to do it, God. Break the yoke. Break the yoke. Send the deliverance. Open up the heavens. Turn the situation around. Allow transformation to happen. The miracle that we have been praying for, oh God, let it manifest in the land of the living that you might show your strength, that we might experience your power. And we thank you for it in advance. Thank you for the answer in advance. Thank you for the courage in advance. Thank you for the healing in advance. Thank you, oh God, for the favor in advance. Thank you, oh God, for the situation that is turned around in advance. Thank you, oh God, for the marriage that will be fixed in advance. Thank you, oh God, for the comfort and confidence and assurance that I am whole as my single self in advance. Yes, God. We bless you, God. In Jesus' name, all the people said amen. Hallelujah. This word today is going to be good for somebody. 1 Samuel chapter 18. 1 Samuel chapter 18. After David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond between them, for Jonathan loved David. From that day on, David kept Saul, excuse me, from that day on, Saul kept David with him and wouldn't let him return home. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. Jonathan sealed the pact by taking off his robe and giving it to David, together with his tunic, sword, bow, and belt. Whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it successfully. So Saul made him a commander over the men of war, an appointment that was welcomed by the people and Saul's officers alike. When the victorious Israelite army was returning home after David had killed the Philistine, women from all the towns of Israel came out to meet King Saul. They sang and danced for joy with tambourines and cymbals. This was their song. Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. This made Saul look side-eye. <laughs> What's this? They gave credit to David with ten thousands and me only thousands. Next, they'll be making him their king. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. The very next day, a tormenting spirit from God overwhelmed Saul, and he began to rave in his house like a madman. David was playing his harp as he did each day. But Saul had a spear in his hand, and he suddenly hurled it at David, intending to pin him to the wall. But David escaped him twice. Saul was then afraid of David, for the Lord was with David and had turned away from Saul. Amen. Have your seats. Tell somebody, don't stunt my growth. Don't stunt my growth. This is, this is part two. Don't stunt my growth. As I shared last week, we talked about the heart, which is kind of foundational to the premise of the entire conversation. But we're going to be talking about power, money, and sex. Because these are things that can stunt your growth. 
And as I, as I look at the world today, I have concluded that if there is one thing that is idolized above all others, it's power. Power. People love power. Nothing can do more harm or good than power. P power can be used for great ends. Power can be used to create. Power can be used to bring change. Power can be used to bring justice. But power, when it's in the wrong hands, can be dangerous and volatile because of how people tend to act when they have power. It's also dangerous because if there's one thing that none of us like, it's somebody else having control over my life. Even God. Let me say it again in a different way. One of the things that we really take issue with is the people who have been given authority over us. Even when we're talking about God. And so the sin of power is the desire to be more than we were created to be. It starts in the very beginning. The, 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 the truth of the matter as to why Adam and Eve did what they did is because they wanted to be God. They wanted to have power. And the problem with all of this is that Demons are real. And we live in a world that is made up of systems, political systems, social systems, economic systems. And at the core of all of these systems are spiritual realities. And so demons are real, and they show up in these systems. They, they show up in these social systems for people who want to elevate themselves above others. They, they show up in economic systems and how executives will do everything and anything to make a dollar. These demons show up in political systems for people who want to elevate party and for people, God help me be clear, for people who want to deal with their own guilt by giving a handout to somebody whose skin is a different color, but not allowing them to come into the same conference room to make decisions. In other words, demons are real. And if we fail to deal with our demons, we are doomed to be dominated by them. Our responsibility as those who are of the household of faith, our responsibility is to discern these spiritual powers, call them what they are, and to use a greater spiritual power to destroy them before they destroy us. In, in other words, in order to grow, we have to overcome the demonic potential of power. And so we see this tension between creative power and destructive power in the relationship between Saul and David. Right in this text, this young boy David has been identified to be the next king of Israel. But as of now, he's still a shepherd boy. 
He, 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 he's a shepherd boy, but he's a shepherd boy who had confidence and courage in his promise and in the power that God had placed within him to live it out before he got the title. And so David has just taken down Goliath. D David unsolicited volunteered himself to use a slingshot to take down a giant. Because when you got power from God, it doesn't matter how big the party on the other side of the table is. When you got power from God, all you need is a stone and a slingshot. Come back to that in a minute. Uh, but he's a shepherd boy, and he's taken down Goliath. And Saul has seen his promise and seen his power, and so he wants to bring him and make him part of the, 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 the tenure of Saul as king. But Saul gets a little um, insecure. Saul has this schizophrenic thing going on between liking what it is that David can do for him and being afraid of what it is that David might take from him. So there's this tension between creative power and destructive power in the life and in the mind and in the heart of Saul. And, 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 and the question for us today is this. How do you overcome the demonic potential of power? Because be very clear. We learn from David's life that he also has some demonic potential from pow for power. So how do you overcome the demonic potential for power? Here it is. We're going to jump into it. Um, number one... Understand that you do not need to have position to have power. David has no title yet. David, D David does not have a particular office in the castle. David is what falls into the category of miscellaneous on your job description. Other duties. <laughs> that, that's who David is. He ain't got no title. But he does have power. We, we saw it on the battlefield with Goliath. He does have power. We saw it in his willingness to take on things that seemed to be too big for him. He does have power. We saw it when he was selected as last among his brothers, had to be called in from the field even to get the assignment. He does have power. And this is why Saul is upset. It's because Saul has natural power. This is why Saul tries every trick in the book as king and still can't take down David. It's because Saul has position, but David has power. It's why Saul is schizophrenic and losing his mind. It's because he realizes he has the power of a king, but David has the favor and the power of God. There is a difference between human power and spiritual power. Uh, uh, human power is assigned uh, and based on titles and tenure. Spiritual power comes from a higher place. You do not need a position or a title to have access to power. So I, I got some NBA illustrations today. Anybody follow the Miami Heat? You know uh, Udonis Haslam? Udonis Haslam is 43 years old. Still in the league. Don't get much playing time. But when he gets in the game, the crowd goes crazy. And everybody defers and points to Udonis because what he has done for that franchise 
and how he has handled his life and his career gives him a level of deference and everybody knows that he has power from the end of the bench. You do not need position or title in order to have access to power. One of the ironies of spiritual power is that it can look like weakness. <laughs> it, it, it can look like it can't do anything. Spiritual power can be discounted because it doesn't occupy the corner office. It's down in the mail room. It can look like we, and this is why, God, Lee, I, I may not get to the end of the sermon. This is why an ordinary person can have extraordinary power. I'm trying to help somebody that's trying to figure out why you still in the bowels of the office building and not getting the respect that you should get. Greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. What does that mean? That means if God is for you, if God is for you, there's no boss, there's no supervisor, there's no president, there's no doctor, there's no lawyer can do anything against you because God is on your side. You and God by yourself. I wish I had some help up in here for somebody who could tell a story how there was a time when everybody was trying to cut you off, when nobody wanted to see you win, when nobody wanted to give you help, when nobody would open a door, but God. I wish there was somebody in here who could testify about a time when you didn't even think that you were worth it, but God. Is there anybody in the house that can testify that there was a God in heaven who looked out for me, opened doors for me, made ways for me, gave favor to Is there anybody in the house? You do not need a position to have power. What you need is a connection to the overseer. And if you call out to him, Ain't that what we sang about? We got to stop singing these songs that we don't mean. If you don't mean it, don't sing it. If you don't believe it, don't say it. But here's what I know. God will make a way when there seems... <laughs> Somebody shout, don't stunt my growth! You don't need a position to have some power. What you need to do is you need to learn to sharpen your ability to discern spirits. You need to learn to sharpen. Can I take my jacket off? You need to learn to sharpen your ability to discern spirits. What, 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 what does discernment have to do with power? Well, um, in order to understand that, you need to see how two-faced Saul really is. You, you need to recognize how fickle Saul really is. Saul is king. Got all the powers of the king at his disposal. And at some moments, you would think that Saul wants to see David win. But the next moment, Saul is pulling out a spear and trying to pin David to the wall. This is, this is the text. Saul makes him commander over armies and then tries to take his life. Things changed for Saul. 
when Saul heard the women celebrating what David was able to do. <laughs> it was all good when the women were talking about Saul taking down his thousands. <laughs> but then they go and call David who's taking down his ten thousands. What the what? Because people who have power often have insecurity. And that insecurity comes out in their ability or their attempts to try to hold on to it by any means necessary. Saul has this cocktail of power and pride, power and insecurity. And it's demonic. But the thing is, it can't always be seen. It has to be discerned. Because you do not see spiritual things. You have to discern spiritual things. Okay, y'all not getting this. Let me go into my legal bag for a minute. Let me go into my, my attorney bag. Anybody heard of circumstantial evidence? Okay, sir. So, so. Circumstantial evidence is pieces of information that you piece together to form a conclusion. The opposite of circumstantial evidence is direct evidence, where the truth of a matter is clear based on the face of it. So um, if, if, if I shoot someone and a gun is found the next day and I'm nowhere in the scene, they might try to piece together where I was, what time I was there, whether there are fingerprints on the gun, whether I purchased the gun, that's all circumstantial. But if I'm standing next to the gun, moments after the shooting has taken place, that's more direct evidence. And I'm bringing this up because you cannot see power. You can only see the effects of power. But you cannot see power itself. And you cannot see power's motives. So you have to learn to discern. God, I'm teaching better than y'all talking to me. Somebody say discern. To perceive it based on what you see in the spirit. So, here's how this works. When, when there are people who have privilege and they try to use laws and processes and try to use people who don't know no better, wanting to change a community to make it more, look more like them, and you have people who are elected who see what's happening but won't say a word because they are more concerned about pleasing the new neighbors so they can stay in office rather than making sure that righteousness and equity and justice prevail. You have to discern. I'm sorry, I didn't go into talking about foster house. You, you, you have to ask God for clarity. And when you go and ask God for clarity and to show you where the demonic spirits are at work, God will give you insight and clarity and wisdom and your job is then to go and call a demon what it is and speak truth of power because truth might allow for whatever it is to be uncovered. Am I talking to anybody in this room? Fat, I'm trying to make it as clear as possible. I need y'all to understand something. Just because you saved does not mean you are exempt from the work of demons. You have buttons, and if those buttons are pushed on the right day, at the right time, your greed will come out, your pride will come out, your lust will come out, 
Let, let, let me say it another way. Let me say it another way. You might be saved, but your flesh ain't. And this is why you can just finish praying for self-control. And as soon, no, before you say amen, you get an urge to do the very thing that you just asked God to help you. God, I wish I had some honest folk in the house. Because <laughs> your spirit might be saved, but your flesh ain't just yet. Paul says it best, the things I want to do are the things that I just can't seem to do. It's the things I know I shouldn't do and ought not do. Those are the things that I seem to keep doing. There are times when demonic potential of power will rear its head. When that happens, not if it happens. Somebody say when. When that happens. You have to activate spiritual discernment and call out demons for what they are. Especially when the demons are trying to get hold of you. Because if there's one thing demons don't like, it's being called out. Have you ever discovered, have you ever discovered that when you call out demons, all of a sudden the demons get more demonic? When you call out demons for what they are, the demons get more active. Here's what I'm here to tell you, that demons have power, but Jesus got more power. Demons have some ability, but God has all ability, and you need to call it out, especially when it's active in you, and declare and affirm that there is no weapon that's formed against me. No greed, no lust, no desire for power. There is no weapon that's for I am a child of God, more than a conqueror. Air and joint as I wish I had with Jesus Christ. You better learn how to discern. That's the hash for today. Learn to discern. Because you might not see it, but God will show it to you. Stop ignoring it. When people show you who they are, you believe them. And go, God, I didn't even have this. When somebody shows you who they are, you believe them. And you speak in the name of Jesus. And so here's the last piece. Here's the last piece. You, you got you to gotta learn to discern, sharpen your discernment ability. Got to understand that you don't need position to have power. And then, and then, in order to make sure that power does not stunt your growth, you got to learn to play offense. <laughs> you got to learn to play offense. Nothing Saul does can get to David. In fact, while Saul is raging, David got so much peace. <laughs> Saul losing his mind, T. David playing his guitar. That's all a harp really is. That's what a liar really is. It's like a guitar. So, so, so Saul is losing his mind. And David got peace that passes human understanding and earthly king power. Because human power will never be able to take down spiritual power. The only thing that can challenge power is power. And the only thing that can take down power is a greater power. So the way to combat human power is with spiritual power. And the issue in the church, in the household of faith is, we've been taught to only play defense. 
Dion, Dion, we've been taught to only play defense. But if you want to win on any level, you got to learn to go on offense. Okay, let me give it to you how you can get it. I told you I had a whole bunch of NBA illustrations. Anybody heard the whole story about Dylan Brooks? Dylan Brooks plays for uh, the, the, the Grizzlies, for the Memphis Grizzlies. And he's known as an enforcer, as a defensive specialist. And so uh, after game two, he said some things about LeBron James, about how LeBron James is old, how LeBron is washed up, how he's over the hill, and how he ain't going to respect nobody until they prove that they can score on him. Here's the problem. The record is that LeBron James is the greatest scorer in the history of the NBA. The record is that LeBron James has not just one championship, not just two championships, but several NBA championships. The problem is that the record is that LeBron can put the ball in the basket. So last night was game three. And Brother Brooks came out. Anybody see the game? Missed almost every shot. Got frustrated. Got thrown out the game. And his team got crushed. Because it's great to know how to play defense. But if you want to win, you better learn how to go on offense and score. So can I tell you what the Bible says? Here's what Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 through 17 says. Uh, can you mind if I just read it to you? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the evil schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world, and spiritual forces of evil. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, not half the armor, not part of the armor. Somebody say full armor so you can stand your ground. And after all of that, still stand firm with the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, the shield of faith. I love it when I can just preach Bible. The shield of faith, which can extinguish the flames of the evil one. The helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit. You cannot see truth, but it's a weapon that's got power. You can't see righteousness, but it's a weapon that has power. You can't see peace, but it's a weapon that has power. You can't see faith, but it's a weapon that has power. You can't see the Word of God, but it's a weapon that has power. And so here's what Paul says. The weapons of this warfare are not carnal. They don't sit in an office. It's not based on a title. Nothing to do with position, but mighty. Mighty, mighty, strong, able, powerful, mighty, strong, able, powerful, mighty, strong, able, powerful, mighty, strong, able, powerful, mighty, Whom 
the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Because when the enemy came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled. They stumbled. Yes. Because I got power to live right. Power to walk right. position, but I got power. Ain't got a whole lot of accolades, discernment, and power. Is there anybody here that's got... Give God a shout like you're a child of God. for the enemy when you don't believe that you got power. But let me tell you how much power you got. Through storms, you're still here. Through rain, you're still here. Through accusations, you're still here. Through sickness, you're still here. Through schemes, you're still here. And here's the thing, the power that you got is the same power that got Jesus up. It's, it's the same power that got Jesus out of a grave. If your situation ain't harder than that, then you need to know Am I talking to anybody in this house? Don't stunt my growth! Here it is, y'all. Here it is. Come on, stand to your feet. We done. Stand to your feet. Yes, God! <laughs> I, need you, I need you to know it when you get to work tomorrow. You got power. I need you to know... When they accuse you of stuff that you didn't do, you got power. I need you to know that even when they hold what you did against you, you still got power. Reconciliation power. Resurrection power. Restoration power. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, y'all. When you, when you go to our, our church's website, you see the words belong, believe, become. And that, that belong principle that's right in the middle there, it's, it's in the middle on purpose because that's what keeps everything together. Your willingness to believe. Your willingness to trust God. And, and the reason that you got to believe it because you can't explain it. You, you don't have all the answers. But if you would just believe God, the greatest limitation to activating the power of God in your life is you believing that you got it. You got to believe you got it. God sent me here to tell you that you got it. And if you will use it for his glory, 
God won't only let you have it, but God will amplify it. I don't care who you are. Your testimony becomes fuel and fertilizer for your progress. And somebody here needs to make the decision today that you believe it. That's what needs to happen. Pr praise team, come on, come on, come on. We're we done. I need somebody to believe that you got power. I am sick and tired of being in church and seeing church act like it has to be on defense all the time. Sometimes you got to go on offense and tear the devil's kingdom down. And that starts with you accessing the power source. Who is Jesus? And so this is the invitation. If you have not accessed the power source, if you don't have relationship with Jesus Christ, the one who gives you access and makes power available, this invitation is for you. The Bible says that if you would just confess that you believe him, if you would just confess that you believe him, that's all that's necessary for you to gain access to the power. So if you don't have relationship with Jesus Christ, you've never prayed that prayer of confession, we want to pray it with you today. Can I invite you to just join me right here? Can I invite you to just grab your things and join me right here? If you don't have a church, if you don't have a place where you have committed yourself and where you are serving, let me invite you to come. Grab your things. Meet me right here. You don't have a relationship with Christ. <clears throat> you don't have a church. This is the day. This is the moment. This is the time. Grab your things. Meet me right here. This is why God brought you here today. If I'm talking to you, just grab your things. Maybe ask somebody next to you if they want to walk too. Let's do this together. Grab your things. Meet me right here. Come on, let's go. We're waiting on you. That's good. Come on, come on. Bless you. Hang on for one second. Got some other things to say. There's more people in this room that want to be walking. There's more people in this room that want to connect. There's more people in this room that want to know and experience this power. And in moments like this, I want to be sure that it's not an emotional response, number one, but I also want to be sure that you have the opportunity because I ain't going to have God come for me and say that I ain't offer it. So let me be clear and let you know part of this is selfish because I, I, I'm going to be accountable to God, but I ain't the only one that's going to be accountable to God. part of the aisle I need you to make way for somebody who's in the inside part because what they're doing is they're using that as an excuse to not come out so we're gonna sing this through one more time and we're gonna help each other can we do that God will do we're waiting on you
I praise God for these that have walked today. With you is an altar counselor. There's somebody who is with you, beside you, behind you. They're going to escort you downstairs. I want to make sure you take your phone because you can catch the QR code. Just put your name in there. That's how we connect. Somebody from the ministry here in New Bethlehem is going to reach out and connect with you. Because today is a significant day for y'all. Today is a, is a game-changing day for y'all. And I want y'all to know how excited I am for what it is that you have done in taking this step and what it is that God has in store for each and every one of y'all. I need y'all to help me celebrate them. and every one of you. Tell somebody next to you, I praise God for you. I praise God for you. Hallelujah. If you are worshiping with us online, there is information in the chat box there. You can text connect to the number that's on your screen. You can connect with us here at New Bethel no matter where it is that you are in the country and partner with us in this kingdom pursuing community where we are trying to do damage to the enemy's kingdom. Tear it all the way down. May the God who gives you power fill you, assure you, and give you courage that you might activate it starting right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Love y'all. Have a great day. Thank you.